This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. On Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com with Jamie Lent and Jeff McGuire and Chuck Hines. Yates Flooring Center chat line is open. Go to Double T 97.3.com for that. Or the mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. Benchmark Hotline 2 is open. Uh, I, I don't know that they're on the line every time that they play, but where I was last night, I saw the uh, the spurs that get exchanged uh, between uh, the two universities, you know, Texas Tech and Texas. And these are the spurs that I thought were lost. These were spurs that were uh, commissioned um, by um, a, a former... Uh, Western wear store here in town, uh, Lusky's and uh, Ed Lusky and his his group, and then the Lusky Ryan's group down in uh, down in Austin. Um, but they were the the Spurs from 1996, the original Spurs that were uh, exchanged between the two teams were lost, or they're in somebody's garage or closet or you know sports room or whatever. Anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know that if we had lost, they would have had to give them back to Texas because I think that's just a football thing. I'm not really sure. Okay, not really sure. Okay, don't do you, know much about the Spurs. Do you do you um, do you get into the exchanging of things like that for wins and losses, or does it? Is it, uh, how, do you, how do you do it during basketball season when you play twice? Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't. I think it's just a football thing. Because, you know, you would always be... So, but you saw them yesterday? I saw them, yeah. Where I was, they had them displayed. Oh. They had them displayed. They, and maybe they just brought them out because we own them because of the win over Texas in football. Okay. So maybe that was just kind of a display of a reminder of what transpired here this past fall. But anyway, I didn't... Uh, I didn't... I was kind of surprised. I didn't, I didn't think that they... That they went went over if, uh, for a, for a basketball loss. I mean, heck, you got baseball series coming up. You know, at some point in time too, where you play, you know, two out of three. Mm-hmm. So, are you going to go back and forth? You know, I don't I don't think so. But I think that just I think it's just a football thing. But anyway, it's cool to cool to see. Uh, I saw this yesterday. Not that he needs any, um, but the uh, the Super Bowl MVP no longer gets a car for being. The Super Bowl MVP. Oh yeah, yeah. This started in 1967 when um, General Motors gave Bart Starr a brand new Corvette. He was the MVP for Super Bowl II, which was then called the AFL NFL Championship Game. Uh, they they put the Roman numerals after the fact. Uh, he won a second one in 1968, and that tradition continued until 2015. So uh, I did not know that that had been discontinued. In 2015, Hyundai took over for General Motors, and they didn't want to just hand out free cars, so they put an end to that. Okay. Okay. So I thought that was, you know, I was like, I always remember the, you know, the Super Bowl MVP, like the World Series MVP usually gets a new truck or something, kind of a car or truck of their choice, right? Yeah, I remember that at yeah, some they, bad times. They have, it, have it have it out there on the field, you know, and they mm-hmm. they give it to the guy, and then you're like, how's that guy get that home? <laughs> but they have, you know, probably car dealerships. It's in probably his, not the exact truck. Probably it's not. His or probably, car. probably not. Probably not. Probably not. I, you know, sometimes I'm naive like that. It's like, how does that how's that guy get that home? Uh-huh. Real question is how many of them actually took the car and didn't just well, take that, the cash out? And, and, that yeah. be, and that became that became part of the problem is that and you know there was a, a period of time you know up until the I don't know the nineties before they started making these huge 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 amounts of money where that didn't really mean anything to them. I don't know. I think new Corvette still means something to a lot of people. Oh no, no, the Corvette, even them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the Corvette, right? A- absolutely, absolutely. The Corvette. I, I would. Uh... Yeah, I'd want the. I mean, because they have money, I'd want the vehicle just to say this is my MVP. Yeah, you know, vehicle. Mm-hmm. Like, would you? Would you have uh, like if you were Super Bowl? It said MVP on it. Should be say F- SB MVP. Yeah. Oh, uh, S SB MVP, whatever number it was mm-hmm. for the Super Bowl. Fifty-seven. 
for this one, yeah, but I wasn't the necessarily MVP <coughs> in the Super Bowl. Sure, right, 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 right. Anyway, you'd put would you put vanity plates on there on your car? You probably the, would. Yeah, probably. Oh. Would. That was the on that one, I would. Yeah, on that one, I would. Like on my personal vehicle, no. License plate's a license plate, but right. on that one, that one's different. Okay. I uh, wanted personalized plates. I just don't want to pay for it. What would your personalized plates be? I don't know. Chuck sidekick, it would say. No, 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 no. Be like something like Red Raider for life or something along, something along those lines. For a long time, I wanted PAX 4-3. PAX 4-3. Oh, okay. Because I won a championship. Sure. John yeah. Paxson. John Paxson, yeah. yeah. PAX 4-3. Yeah. No coup coach, huh? I guess it'd be no, too many I, letters. PAX is 3 won it. Yeah, yeah. no, but... Yeah, packs when your boy them. Barkley made a bad defensive play. <laughs> My boy Barkley. Uh, man, I hate to bring this guy's name up because, man, he, he, he it is time for Terry Bradshaw to be done um, after yet another botched post-game Super Bowl interview where he tells the head coach to waddle over here to Andy Reid. Um, but uh, he, he told a story on the Super Bowl pregame show that he had to borrow money um, basically, so that he could fly his parents to this for, to his first Super Bowl, said, "You know, I made thirty grand." Um, and he goes, "I had to." He goes, "I couldn't afford it." So he goes, "So what he did was he did a, a shoe deal." Um, I can't remember which shoe he did it with, but he got the shoes on and put them on. Went out for super pregame warmups, and they were they were terrible shoes, but. He had done the deal, so I think he. I don't think he ended up wearing them in the game, just in the pregame, because they hurt his feet. Mm-hmm. But he did enough to do that. But I think it's time for them to do somebody else there in the postgame interview that can uh, can make a real good representation of Fox in the NFL. That dude's a buffoon. Uh, yep, and we've known that for a long time. But they just. Uh, but they keep rolling him out there because, keep... you know, people love the crazy guy. Well, the crazy guy probably should stay in the cage for the uh, for the post game stuff. Six thirty seven this morning here on the morning drive. Take your thoughts, comments on the Eighth Morning Center chat line. Go to double t ninety seven three dot com for that on the mobile app. Benchmark hotline is open too at eight zero six seven seven one zero nine seven three. Again, we'll have uh, Lubbock Cooper girls basketball on the air for you today. As they take on Paladero team that's sixteen and fourteen, the Cooper girls are twenty five and six. They should make good, pretty good work of PD, right? I, I would think so. I, I'm pretty confident in the uh, Pirates in that one. Okay, and uh, as far as friendship, they had a big win yesterday afternoon over El Paso, El Dorado. Yep. Friendship boys basketball tonight. They'll play at uh, seven thirty uh, against uh, San Angelo at the Tiger Pit. Senior night tonight, I would presume. I think they had it the other night. Oh, did they? Okay. Yeah. All right. So probably on a Friday, make it maybe a little yeah. bit easier for people to, to get there and stuff like that. Okay. I, think, that makes, I think I heard they had that, it Friday That makes night. sense. That makes yeah. sense. Uh, Lady Raiders will be on the road tomorrow in Norman. Take on Oklahoma. Oklahoma, last poll that I saw, they were ranked 16th. This is a game that they felt like that they kind of let get away from them. But Oklahoma, I think, is a better basketball team than when – Lady Raiders played them last time. They're they're a different team as well. Uh, we'll have it at five thirty. The tip at six uh, tomorrow from Norman. As uh, we'll have that on one hundred seven seven. Yes, FM six thirty nine this morning here on the morning drive. Again, thoughts, comments. Yates Flooring Center chat line. Uh, somebody says this: two top fifteen teams should mean more to the committee than ten wins versus teams. From fifty to a hundred. Well, the, the 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 unfortunate thing for that is you, you've lost ten Big Twelve games, and you've only won three. So while it means a lot, the the ten that you lost, they 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 account for something too. Those ten that you lost, uh, the two that you just won don't account overcome those ten. Yeah, and there's no question that top fifteen wins mean more than. Um, just typical or normal wins or whatever, but two compared to ten does not equate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you wanted to say, you know, two top fifteen wins is more impressive than 
uh, four wins against teams that are 50 to 100, maybe that's fair. Mm-hmm. Okay, but two to 10 doesn't, that, that's, that's stretching a little bit too far, I think. Both teams really took care of the basketball. We'll talk more about Tech and Texas just after seven, but Red Raiders with 12 turnovers, Texas with just six. Red Raiders get five points off turnovers in Texas, eight. Really, that was a non non factor uh, in the ballgame. Red Raiders, though, pounded it inside in the paint, 36 to Texas's 18. So that was a, a big factor in the ball game. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Today is the 14th day of February 2022, Valentine's Day. Here is Jeff McGuire with this day in sports history. A lot to get to, so let's get going. 1960, <laughs> okay. second Daytona 500. <laughs> Junior Johnson survives a 37 car crash on turn four to win the uh, Daytona 500 in his Chevrolet. 1966, Will Chamberlain breaks an NBA career scoring record at 20,884 points. 1971, 13th Daytona 500. Richard Petty wins his third Great American race. He would go on to win the inaugural Winston Cup title that year. Mm. 1982 in the 24th Daytona 500. Popular day for the Daytona 500, by the way. Obviously, Coming up right? on Saturday. Uh, Bobby Allison wins with a margin of victory over Cale Yarbrough in an impressive 23 seconds, more than half a lap. Was that when they would get in the fight? I don't know if that's when they got into the fight or not. Yeah. But uh, half a lap win, that's huge in NASCAR. Okay. 1987, Detroit Pistons. And boring. <laughs> they, well, it depends on who you're rooting for. Uh, Detroit Pistons in 87 versus the Philadelphia 76ers. Game draws a record crowd of 53,745 at the uh, Pontiac Superdome. It's the third largest NBA crowd in history. Pistons win 125 to 107. 1993 in the 35th Daytona 500. Dale Jarrett driving for Joe Gibbs Racing wins in front of Dale Earnhardt Sr. 1995, Portland Trailblazers trade Clyde Drexler to the Houston Rockets, who would go on to win the NBA championship. 1999, 41st Daytona 500, Jeff Gordon wins. His first Daytona 500 pole sitter to win the race since Bill Elliott did it in 1987. Seems like there's an abnormally number of uh, Sundays for uh, February the 14th. Well, this is over 60 years I'm looking at here. So. No, I know. It just seems like a pretty large number uh 2019 oklahoma city guard russell westbrook makes a triple double 44 points, 14 <coughs> rebounds and 11 assists in an nba record 11th consecutive game as the thunder go down 131 to 122 in new orleans but his numbers were good his numbers were good <laughs> still got the luck but they took the L. national cream filled chocolates day i'm in jamie i don't like cream filled anything i didn't think you did Happy birthday to Simon Pegg, who's 53. Jim Kelly, 63. Mm. Jadavion Clowney, 30. Drew Bledsoe, 51. And Teller from Penn and Teller, the magician combo, is 76 today. Okay. And instead of talking about any of the deaths that happened today in history, and there are a bunch. Really? St. Valentine's Day massacre. Right. St. Valentine himself. Sure. there There was a shooting. A school shooting today. I mean, there's been there's a ton of them today. We're not going to talk about any of them specifically. We kind of just Instead, did, though, but no, I didn't go into any. How many people were killed in any of those? Oh, I don't know. I'm waiting. Okay, <laughs> well, he's, he's a little ramped up today. <laughs> Instead, okay, today in 1990, 3.7 billion miles away from the sun, Voyager one spacecraft takes a photograph of the earth Mm. the picture known as the pale blue dot depicts our planet as a nearly indespicable speck roughly the size of a pixel and that is this day in sports history a pixel it's actually technically smaller than a pixel in the in the photograph itself it was so small they thought it was dust on the picture and tried to wipe it off wow the original picture we could have just been wiped away we could have been, yeah. By I mean, somebody, the planet would still be here, but yeah. that's what they thought in the original picture. Hmm. That is the stay in sports history. Man, this is a, a packed, filled, action, 
packed, you know, just boom, 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 boom. Uh, by the way, the Yarborough Allison fight was February 18th, 1979. Where those two guys got in a fight after the race. <laughs> and then Donnie Allison joined in as well. So you had the Yarboroughs versus the Allison brothers. So that was, I think I watched that live. It was one of those, it was a time where. 1979, senior in high school, and uh, you didn't have very many sporting events on us after the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl was usually in early early to mid-January in those in those days. Um, weren't, weren't that many college basketball games on. Um, you'd have, like, maybe a game of the week. This is before ESPN. Mm-hmm. Or right, right about the time ESPN launched. It was pretty close, right, right about that time, but there wasn't really a whole lot, whole lot on in February. It's kind of a a dull time in sports. You would have thought that maybe I would have gone outside. It would have been a time for me to go outside. Mm-hmm. But it was probably really, really cold would have been my guess. So, at any rate. Uh, we missed yesterday, one thing that we missed um, the day after the Super Bowl. Um, yesterday in uh, sports history uh, was the day that uh, Marvin Gaye sang his famous um National anthem rendition at the NBA uh, All Star Game, and and it it is considered to be the one of the best, if not the best. It was February thirteenth, nineteen eighty three. That was it was at the uh, NBA All Star Game. It was outstanding. Okay. Good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. It's better late than never. Looks like the Texas Tech. Basketball team is officially back. Would you say that, Jamie? Uh, I th- I wouldn't say they're back. I would say they're playing better than they have all season long. Mm-hmm. So maybe like if you're saying back compared to where they were a year ago, like we have a competitive team again, mm-hmm. more than competitive team. Uh, it it just uh, it feels like uh, some things are getting figured out. Mm-hmm. And. Maybe part of the, uh, you know, the issue that this team is having is it's kind of been taken care of itself. It, it has been taken care of. That's good, right? It's good. Well, yeah. I mean, to a certain degree, yeah. sure. It, except you, I mean, pretty much wasted the season figuring it out. You have, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, you know, there are still so many questions with this team, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so many questions about what went on in Hawaii and uh, all, all that good stuff. And, um, but, you know, in the NIL stuff that is, that is, you know, reportedly affected the team in some ways. But I, I just, I don't know. All I know is I like the way they're playing right now. I know that even when they were struggling and they were, oh, and whatever in Big 12 play, you knew that. They were close a bunch. Mm-hmm. They were close a bunch, and I just wish they had been able to figure out what they've figured out now um, a while back. Well, you're going to have to figure out the NIL stuff, and you know whether it's you know how you handle that inside the locker room, how you how you you know try to keep it from being you know um, a, a jealousy thing. I'm not saying that it is or it was, um, but I mean it's here to stay. Um, mm-hmm. So you have to you're going to have to figure it out. Uh, as a school or as a team or as a as a locker room, um, how you're going to handle those things and just learn how to deal with it. Um, yeah, and then the other side of, I mean, the challenge, if if any of the rumors are true that we heard, was it last week, about the donors are not on board anymore sure. with Coach Adams and his staff, then that's uh, those those are... Those are different kind of NIL issues to worry about because you can't win in college basketball right now without the donors. Right, and, and you would have you can't recruit. Yeah, and you would have to think that you could. And I don't know all the dynamics of why the, why the, what happened specifically and why there's you know some that are on the outs, but you would you would have to think that you know that's a a lunch a meeting a you know neutral site that's a hey. Let's let bygones be guy bygones, and let's figure out how to, to to do what's the most important thing and what's in the best interest of Texas Tech and Texas Tech basketball. How can we work together, fellas? You know, you got to sometimes you have to give to get, and uh, sometimes both sides, you know, have to take a step back and figure out how they can do it better. 
yeah, that's I think that's well said and um I think mature folks hopefully will handle it the right way mm-hmm. but um I mean, if you just put that to these two people right here in this room who both hold grudges, <laughs> you think it's going to be that easy? No, it's it, I, no. If there anything like Chuck Hines and Jamie Lynn, and, and not that easy. It's not that easy. No, yeah. it's, it's not that easy. But maybe at, at some point in time, you can get the right people in the room to kind of help bridge the gap. How about that? Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. If you have a uh, thought or comment on the ball game from last night and you want to weigh in, you can go to the Double T 97.3 mobile app. It's presented by Happy State Bank. Pittsburgh Hotline is uh, open as well uh, at 7710973. So I guess this is kind of one of those deals where, okay, so you've won two games on the road, or excuse me, at home, haven't won a Big 12 game on the road, have maybe your best opportunity before you get to Oklahoma? Before you get to Oklahoma, yeah. I, I think I put West Virginia in a higher regard than I do Oklahoma. So mm-hmm. I think Oklahoma is your best chance for a road win. Mm-hmm. So if you if you won the next, you know, one Saturday, which is an 11 a.m. tip, I think that benefits you. Uh, although it's it's wonky because, I mean, they got a long flight, um, but it is what it is. And it's just, um, I think when you have those early tip times, it just, just seems like it. The everything goes really fast, and then all of a sudden the game's there. Um, so that'll be um, it'll be Saturday morning from the WVU Coliseum uh, there in Morgantown, ten o'clock our airtime uh, Saturday morning, and then uh, you'll turn right around and uh, travel to Norman on Tuesday and uh, play at the Lloyd Noble Center. That'll be an eight o'clock tip time on Tuesday before you host. TCU a week from Saturday, uh, and that too is an 11 a.m. tip time. So that's an early game as well. But you get a couple Saturday games uh, down the stretch uh, as you'll play that one, and then on Saturday, March the 5th, you'll finish up against uh, Oklahoma State. So if you have uh, a basketball thought, you can uh, hit us up on the Yates Ford Center chat line. All right. Um, I saw this this morning. Uh, you probably already know this, but. Uh, the Ghost Runner is here to stay in Major League Baseball. Yay! <laughs> they unanimously approved the rule placing a runner at second at the start of every extra inning. He's uh, not a ghost runner. He's a zombie runner. Ghost runners are invisible and you can't see them. And you use okay. them when you're little kids okay. and don't have enough players. Okay. The zombie runners are the guy that was out last in the last at bat, but he gets to be on second base because extra inning baseball doesn't matter. Okay. According to Major League Baseball. Okay. Well, it's not that it doesn't matter. We just want to get it over with as quick as possible. The uh, rule, they say, was initially implemented in an effort to reduce risk and wear on pitchers in a limited player pool. It also limits slash eliminates the marathon extra inning affairs, which I always kind of liked one of those every once in a while. But I think a lot of people do. You know, I think a lot of people do. You know, uh, I was, you know, we're in the twenty second. You know, I mean, it's not going to see that anymore. I mean, you still could. It could just be also forty five to forty five at that point. Yeah, I mean that that's kind of the funny part about it. I mean, I guess it it does. It definitely speeds it up. But mm-hmm. be, but the truth of the matter is, like Jeff said, I mean, you could have both teams just keep scoring. Since we make it so easy for them to score in extra mm-hmm. innings. Yeah. Sack bunt to first, gets the runner to third, sack fly, gets him home, strikeout, because that's what Major, Major League Baseball does right now. Bottom of the inning, rinse and repeat, do that for eternity. Thankfully, it does not include postseason play. Right, because that's when games matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, and I don't know if you saw this, uh, Jeff, or not, maybe J- I'm. Like I said, I'm certain Jamie saw this. Um, Prior to this, I didn't realize that this was a rule where to throw a position player out on the mound, you had to be at least uh, leading or trailing by six or more runs. I think it's a new rule. Well, A couple years ago. But the new rule is... See, I didn't know that was a rule then. Okay. Now teams in the lead have to hold a 10-run advantage in the ninth before sending a non-pitcher to the mound. And teams trailing by eight or more will be allowed to use position players 
as pitchers at any point in the game per the report. So now you have to be up or down by 8 or 10 in the ninth. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Major League Baseball's... There were a lot of teams doing a lot of that in Major League Baseball. And, where, and why was that a problem? It was the becoming a joke. I mean, we made fun of position players pitching for a while, especially with the Rangers. When they had a string for like eight consecutive games, it felt like you had a second baseman going out there to pitch. I think that eight consecutive games feels like a stretch. About okay, it like felt like six. eight consecutive games, okay. but it was a yeah. lot. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> it, it was starting to become a joke across Major League Baseball. So they I always like to see that. I mean, but... Seeing it once is fun. Seeing it once a series, not quite so much. So were we why, were they, why were they doing it? So that they could save their pitchers for the next, right. for the next game. So I thought we made rules for uh, extra innings to save pitchers' arms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, but that rule's dumb too. Okay. So sometimes we care and sometimes we don't. I, I just think Major League Baseball has a committee that, like, man, we got to come up with something. We got to do something. We got to we got to change this game. We got to we got to come up with some stuff. Let's come up with some rules. Otherwise, they think they're, we're just doing nothing over here. We get together in a you know in a nice hotel conference room and we eat bonbons and we're not doing anything. Let's yeah. come up with rules. Let's let's change some things. How about first pitch at five? What what I mean? Why would you do that? Like who's who? So you're not done at ten o'clock at night. I know, but who can get off night? work at five to be able to or four to go to the ballpark by five? Yeah, who's sitting around going, man? If there's one thing I can't stand about baseball, it's when position pitchers come in to pitch. Nobody ever said that, <laughs> ever. I think people kind of like, oh, I didn't know that guy could do that. Yeah, it's it's comical. It's funny. It's mm-hmm. different. It gives you a reason to watch a blowout game. Mm-hmm. Do you? I don't, I don't. How about this? How about we just put in a mercy rule then? Yeah. If we, if we can't put those guys in, and you got to keep using your pitchers because you're only up seven, mm-hmm. not eight. So why don't we just have a mercy rule? If it's if you're up seven going to the ninth, oh ball game. So two that'll questions. end it faster too. That'd be great. <laughs> Let's get this whole baseball thing over with. Why don't we just play five innings? Uh, so two two questions for you. I mean, they just keep coming up with <laughs> dumb things that don't matter. Right. Uh, one question: Have you do you see this very often in the college game? I mean, you have a lot of pitchers, I understand, but I mean, you're you're limited on the road in the Big Twelve in terms of the number of players you can take. But do you ever see this in the college game? Where well, it, you don't see it uh, as nearly as much, and I think there's a couple different reasons for that. Is because there are plenty of guys that are at the end of the roster yeah, that, that don't see a lot of time, mm-hmm. so you put those guys in there. Also, in conference play, you have a mercy rule. Yeah. On Sundays. On Sundays. Yeah. Uh, next question for you. Would you like to see an expanded Major League base, Baseball roster at the beginning of the year <clears throat> to help you with the transition of just the start of the year? I think that makes sense. You know, go to like, let's yeah. just say you had Because you don't players. want your, your, early on in the season, you may not have your starters go as long as you mm-hmm. have them go mm-hmm. two months later. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to try to hold them back a little bit, and remember they do have spring training, so there's building up to something. Um, if you're going to hold them back a little bit, yeah, that would make sense. You know, the, the, as far as I'm concerned, you can keep it throughout the whole year. Yeah, the challenge is, of course, the expense of it, and you know, getting the guys to. Well, those major league teams are really struggling. Those major league owners are just scraping by. <laughs> Whatever they're going to do with their hundreds of millions of dollars every season. Yeah, I don't know that. I don't know that. I don't know the dynamics. You want to? You want to keep? Yeah, you want to keep. Uh, Position players from pitching, give them three more spots for pitchers yeah, on the roster. That, that, that'd be my – or, and the other thing, too, is then you could get rid of your stupid zombie or ghost runner, however you wanted to do that. But they don't want to have, you know, three that's extra guys a, on the roster and Major League Baseball days. That's not about safety. And, that's about getting the game over with. So it fits in a little – perfect little TV window for you. Right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, you're there not, is something to be said, that. though. You're not wrong. There's something to be said, though, for getting a game over before 1030 at night. That you are losing a younger fan base because they're already in bed. The Super Bowl is a prime example of this. At halftime, it was 715. For the Super Bowl, championship game, 715 was halftime. Granted, it's extended halftime, mm. so it, I, oh, you looked, okay. I was oh, okay. looking for this stat. Okay. It was 715 okay. at halftime. Not gonna game kicked you, off then. at 5. 
Okay. Was anybody upset with the game kicking off at five? Game kicked off about five thirty, actually. Yeah. Was anybody yeah. upset that the game kicked off at five thirty? Nobody complained. We were all ready for it. We were booked. It. We were locked in. We were ready for the Super Bowl. Grants the Super Bowl as opposed to Major League Baseball game. I get it, but seven fifteen was halftime as opposed to the bottom of the first inning in Major League Baseball. Seven twenty five this morning here on the morning drive. I, I I think you make good points, especially with you know sometimes as late as these games start uh, for postseason play uh, for Major League Baseball uh, and even the NBA as well. So I, I'd, I'd like to see him a little bit earlier so that kids can ex- experience that. Heck, I would have preferred this. I mean, kids, this. Can, kids can watch the beginning of the game. I mm-hmm. mean, that's the, that's the history of ever. Yeah. When you're a, a child, your parents don't let you. I mean, so there's been plenty of times where kids had to go to bed in the seventh inning or whatever. So, I mean, so are we saying not play the game? What are we saying change the game so it's only seven innings? No, yeah. we're not. I mm-hmm. mean. I the 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 zombie runner th- is not about losing kids, okay? To watching the game it has no, nothing to do no, with it that. Doesn't. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Jamie's question of the day on Double T ninety seven three is presented by Bizarre Solutions. Call them today for a free cybersecurity audit. All right, seven thirty and some change here this morning on the morning drive. Yates Morning Center chat line is open, so is the benchmark hotline. If you want to comment on Jamie's question of the day, it's open to you, me, and everyone. Here we go. All right, we're going sports rule changes today. Since you oh, kind of got us okay, on that subject, okay, all right. I'm just going to ride the flow, <laughs> ride the wave, right? That's right. Take the three major sports. And tell me one rule that you would like to change. You get to pick just one. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is so much of a rule, but it's uh, it, it kind of is. I would like college football to be on the NFL clock. Okay. Is that can that qualify? It's a clock change. That's fine. Yeah, I'm okay. good with it. I'd like. Yep. It. I'd like. And I definitely agree with you. Um, so that definitely makes it okay if I agree. Yeah, I know, I know, man. I feel, man, I feel like, I feel like when you nod or you go, I agree with you. I feel like, I feel so much smarter because there are many moments that I sit here and go, God, that was dumb. Man, you look small. Man, Jamie just is so. He always says the right thing. I agree with that. You know, you're, yeah, I mean, I'm you're, nodding my head. You know, the old goofus and gallant from Highlights Magazine. You're. You're gallant uh, just <laughs> every single day, and I'm just goofus, Jeff. You fierce. Chuck, you've already got the morning show gig. You don't need to keep kissing us <laughs> yes, as much. Yes, you're so off. You have something on your that. nose there, Chief. <laughs> um, this is a new rule that I want to get rid of. Okay. Because I think it's dumb. Because in no other sport are you stopping a defense from running a defense. Uh, pr- stop banning the shift. Oh, okay. In baseball. Yeah, it's a new rule. We haven't actually seen it used yet because this is the first year but it's dumb the they're you need more scoring in hockey they don't make the goal bigger they make shooters better you need more scoring and scoring basketball they don't lower the nets you know they don't lower the rims you're still at 10 feet play the game learn to hit the ball the other way you're allowed i'm 100 percent behind jeff on that one we haven't even seen it yet and we already hate it yeah um I think it's just crazy, 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 crazy. It just goes against the whole concept of... Hit them where they ain't. Or no, the concept of like as a coach or as analyzing the game and you're like, okay, how do we stop what they do well? What we, mm-hmm. what can we do? How do we make adjustments as mm-hmm. a team to sure. stop a team? And you're not allowed to do that in baseball. You just have to sit there and take it. Mm-hmm. And, and again, I just love the thought that this is going to make baseball just so much better. I, I just... I... How, how will that affect the college game, or does it affect the college game at all? Will they do that, do you think, in college? I think they will eventually do the same thing, yes. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I guess... I don't know. I feel like it will affect the college game more than it will the big leagues. Because, I mean, guys aren't trying to swing for singles now. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, you get it, it's not. I, I, that's part of my questioning. Why do we even care about the shift? Guys are just trying to hit home runs. Right. It's hit them out or strike them out, right? Yeah. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like in basketball right now. It seems like you're either hitting a three or pounding the paint. Yeah. Okay, the one that I'm going to throw out there is the one I mentioned to you yesterday. I, I don't think that uh, you should be able to push a guy forward in mm, football. Yeah, I, I, I really do not like that at all. And I, you know, previously agreed with the rule when you couldn't do it, mm-hmm. and now I, I just don't like it at all. So you turn it into rugby all of a sudden, and <coughs> that just seems like that shouldn't be allowed. It did look like a scrum. Uh, here, here's one that I just kind of came up with. Okay, let me just run this by you. Run up the old flagpole. Mm-hmm. How about? In the NFL, do like the colleges do, one foot in bounds for the receivers? No, I disagree with that one. Okay. I yeah. actually want college to go to two feet in. Yeah, okay. me too. Okay. Me too. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody says this, uh, get rid of the quote, make a football move in the NFL. The Eagles got lucky that they reversed that fumble. I would agree. I would. I, I'm. I'm good with that. I, to me, control of the football and two feet on the ground is a catch. You know, this whole football move thing is just crazy. It's yeah. like this new term we came up with. And why? I don't know. Because <laughs> isn't a fumble exciting? Yes. Isn't that fun to watch? I mean, he caught the ball. The receiver caught the ball, uh, and the Chiefs guy popped okay, him okay let's not just make it about the chiefs okay no, we, it's, we've seen it a million times okay okay we've seen it a million no, I'm just times saying, i'm just saying that was yeah. the most recent thing that... right. we've seen it a million times okay. in football All right. i just like the ball's in his hands he has control of it and his feet are on the ground that's a catch right that's yeah, a catch it's a catch that's a catch so um, you, you should be able to then smack the bajikers out of him and take sure. the ball from him sure how about in football if you go out of bounds the clock should stop college football well it does late in the game yeah late in the game but like uh, every time the clock does the the use of that does change where in early part of the game the clock doesn't yeah. stop yeah i know i, I know I, don't, I know i don't want to change that one okay hey um because i just said that word it just brings me to baseball do you have you been working on that so that you <laughs> so that you've got that got that down i mean no that was something that you'll be like practicing in the shower mm-hmm. over the next couple of days mm-hmm. to get ready for opening day mm-hmm. and when your wife says uh somebody on the chat hey. line says they're surprised i didn't response respond that way yeah and hey uh would you make sure that you put gas in my car every time do you love me every day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've I've not practiced. You know, I've not practiced any of my home run calls. I, none of that. I, none of my. Okay. None of that. Not every day. It's a great day to be a Red Raider. Nothing. None, none of that. Practicing mm-hmm. none of that. I don't. I know. It okay. just happens. It just happens. It's all. Mm-hmm. It's all organic. Uh, I hate targeting. Yeah, you know. And the other thing is, mm, I don't. I don't hate the. T- I'm just reading most off the text yeah. line. What what I, what I what I don't like is how it seems like the offensive player gets to use his helmet running back, especially uh, with a head down into the defensive guy that the defensive guy can't use his head down helmet. They're the not end. supposed to. Right. Like, uh, the rule was set up so that there could be offensive targeting if you're using your helmet as a battering ram, and they are trying to get lower because that's what football is and you're trying to get leverage on the other guy both ways and if the offensive player comes down and gets his head hit by the defensive player it's on the defensive guy yeah. when he didn't change but they just don't call it that yeah way. um it, it does it does feel like too that the helmet to helmet in the nfl is much more allowed than in, in college maybe you know that I, you can, see, I could buy into that that you see some of those plays more than you do um, yeah, I don't. I I, don't, I I like the targeting rule because they're, I mean, they're trying to keep these guys so they're sure better and and uh, living normal lives after football. Well, and speaking, and they're of, also trying to avoid litigation. But speaking of that, Conrad yeah. Dobler died yesterday, seventy two. I mean, he was a dirty, 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 dirty player. He came to Lubbock once. I missed him. I mi- I think I missed him by a year, but he spoke at Tech Night. 
and it, and if I, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this, I'm pretty sure it was him, but it was a very vulgar evening, <laughs> even even by their standards in that time, that day and time. It was pretty bad. But Conrad Dover was, I mean, even it had his picture on the front of Sports Illustrated, the dirtiest player. I mean, he made... <laughs> He made uh, he made Nodama Kinsu look like somebody that just you know kind of roughed up the kids at daycare. That's hard to believe. He he was I mean he was awful, awful. awful. I mean I don't disagree with you that he was awful, but so is Nodama Kinsu. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you he was way worse than Nodama Kinsu ever thought about being in terms of how he his leg whips and everything. I mean he was he was something. Did he play for the Broncos? Played for no he played for the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, he played for the Saints for a little bit too. I check check missed my joke. Never no, mind. I got it. I, I got it. No, I don't joke. think you did. It's fine. You don't have to get it. It's fine. Uh, JL doesn't have to practice. He is money every time. Yeah, Dobler played for the Bills too. Yeah, he had a little cup of coffee yeah. there. Yeah, but so for I, the most part, he was known for what he was playing in the. Uh, for the Cardinals. Uh, mm-hmm. This, put a chip in the football so that we know where the ball is at when they mark it. What do you think about that? So we know where it's at when like they when mark Like when they're always it. trying to spot the ball, like, you know. But you still have the judgment of where was where was the ball when his knee went yeah, down. Yeah, right. Yeah. Did he stomp on people, Chuck? Because Sue has done that on several kids. Yes. I'm just Google Conrad Dober and you'll be like, oh, he was nasty. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Thank you for uh, being with us today on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com. All right, so we've uh, talked a little bit about the logistics of things uh, for the baseball team and uh, what's what's been going on with their construction. How about the construction of this team, Jamie? Uh, as you've kind of had a chance to watch, you know, more of the scrimmages and practices or kind of started thinking about, you know, how it's going to all come together. What what stands out to you about this team? A lot of depth at a lot of different positions. I, I just think the – like, for example, those first couple weekends where you're playing – you're going to play eight games over the first two weeks. Um, I think you're going to see – a lot of different arms. I think you're going to see a lot of different guys and a lot of different um, positions. Uh, you can, you know, you've got three catchers. I think that they're really excited about. I, I think you've got a bunch of different guys that can play second, and I don't know that they've settled on one. Uh, I think that you can. I think the shortstop position is going to be not only. a a freshman, but a freshman who should be in high school. There's two of them to choose from. Uh, the guys that reclassified, I think that um, you got a ton of speed in the outfield and you've got really good options there. Uh, so, I mean, that just kind of leads you to, you know, what can you do on the mound and who's going to step up on the mound? And, you know, knowing that you don't have Jack Washburn for at least a few months, you just really don't know. Um, you know, puts a little bit of a, <coughs> we, you know, he's he's a first year player for the Red Raiders, so you don't know what you have there. But uh, I, I just think that it'll be interesting to see who we find out are the four starters for this upcoming weekend. Uh, Coach Tadlock will have a press conference tomorrow, and I'm sure that'll be announced there. If you had to guess, uh, Gurton and Molina would be the first two. Okay. Okay. Um, Zane Petty, uh, one of the, the freshmen, would be another one. After that, it's it's a it's a good guess. All mm-hmm. right, I have a I have a question for you. This may be a this may be a stupid question, but just think think before after you get over the initial. Ha! Huh, are you kidding me? Then just then then just kind of settle into your brain. With regard with regard to your position players, you you've spoken a couple of times about the depth as being a strength. Can you have too much depth? Well, if you're talking about depth and you're not talking about guys that grab the job and run with it and, like, that guy's so much better than everybody else, that could be a pause, a negative thing, right? Yeah. If you're like, oh, they're all kind of, you know, mixed together and nobody's standing out. I think you can't say who's standing out and who's not until you're playing real games. Mm-hmm. So I think that you have a lot of guys that you're confident in, 
They can play multiple positions. And I think three weeks or a month into the season, we'll start to see Coach Tadlock settling in too. Okay, well, we might have talented guys on the bench, but these are our dudes. Yeah. yeah. It's just going to take a few weeks. He's yeah. got to figure out who plays well when the lights turn on. Has he figured out his, like, how many guys can he have on his roster? Thirty? Is it 33 or? Okay, well, because of COVID and all that, there's extra spots allowed. I think this I think this roster can be at 39. 39. Mm-hmm. I assume he's figured that out. But if you go to Texas Tech's website, it's they have not listed those thirty who the thirty nine are. Okay, and then when you travel to Big Twelve games, it's twenty eight. Is that right? Twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty seven, twenty eight. One 28. of those numbers. Okay. Yeah. So there, how many guys they got over there? They got forty something over there. At one 39? point, they, at one point they had forty six, but I think it's down now. Okay, because it opted some guys out. Yeah, I mean, and so you start. You start kind of looking at that, and go, okay, so you got thirty nine or whatever you whatever the number you have. You have a lot of guys soaking up, you know, uh, innings, um, whether it's at first or second or third or short or the outfield. Um, and then you got a, you got a lot of guys just sitting around. I mean, that's that's where I got to think it's frustrating for a baseball player, like like anybody. But that's that's not anything new. No, it's it's not. It just yeah, seems like, like you you've seen plenty of guys before mm-hmm. that yeah. were bench players. They were saying, you know, I struggled cuz I just never got into a groove. I never could get those consist, consistent at bats. Mm-hmm. That's been over the the course of time and that's why you really appreciate a guy that can come off the bench as a pinch hitter. Sure. And he may get one AB once every four games and he comes through for you and you're like that's a dude we mm-hmm. like having on our bench. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. It's just it's, I just kind of looked looked at that and went, okay. Uh, sometimes you're just going to wonder, okay, is there is there too is there too much? Depth? I don't think. I mean, as the season goes along, I don't think that we're going to be talking about depth. I mean, yeah. We're going to be talking about the the guy the guys that are the starters that are performing. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. And if you don't want to be one of those guys that man only getting three at bats a week, well, you got to perform. Uh, somebody asked this: Are there any new transfers this semester? Yes. Um, any new transfers? Okay, so something that came in that semester that oh, well, I mean, in the last year, I'm, your first one of your first basemen is Gavin Cash. And he's a transfer from Texas. <coughs> okay, um, didn't play a whole lot last year. He played behind the National Player of the Year. So, um, but a guy that they're really high on, a guy that. You know, was, I mean, an absolute stud in the California Collegiate League this summer. Uh, left-handed bat, power, alleys, um, really, really good player. I think he's he's got the potential to be really, really good. Um, other transfer types, okay. I think you'll see Kevin Bazell play both catcher and third base, maybe the primary third baseman. He redshirted with the Red Raiders last year after spending his freshman fall semester at DBU transferred to tech last year he'll get to play now and uh I think he's a middle of the lineup bat that will play well here at uh, Rip Griffin Park with the you know the jet stream to left and all that mm-hmm. I think you'll see him be a big factor uh Nolan Hester um uh, probably the leader in the clubhouse to start in left field he's a transfer from Wofford a kid from Rockwall um smaller guy he's gonna just be a little pest on the baseball field as far as he's going to put the ball in play a ton. He's going to take walks, a high on base percentage, not a ton of power, but high on base percentage. He'll slap it, he'll turn on it, whatever, uh, and a pretty good outfielder as well. So those are three transfers that really jump out at me. Jump out at you. Yeah. 822 this morning here. That on I the... think have, I would guess all three of them will be starters. Hey, going back to Jack Washburn just a second, could you see a scenario where he would be out the whole year and they would just reboot him next year? Possibly, but I I mean, I have, I think you just have to wait and see yeah. where he's at. Yeah. Yeah. It just seems like with pitchers and arms that that, as much as you hope that they're able to come back or whatever, it just seems like that's the it's really, it's kind of like a, I think I, like it's more. Shoulder. Something to do with his back and, and maybe the shoulder too. I, I don't know, but. Oblique. Yeah. It's not like a typical, it's not an elbow or I something gotcha. like that. I got you. Oblique is kind of like the standard, one of the standard baseball yeah. injuries for hitters. Yeah, uh, I, he strained his oblique. Have you ever strained your oblique uh, announcing? I don't know that I have an oblique. <laughs> I, I don't. 
you're not worried about I'm not a twisting. good enough I'm not a good enough athlete to have an oblique. Mm, I think you're pretty good. I think I think I think I think you could hold your own. Eh, you should have seen me play yesterday. You wouldn't have said that. Mm. I don't know, Jamie. I can consider myself great pride that I can injure myself while I'm asleep. <laughs> really? You've never woken up with a bruise. And you're like, how the heck did that get there? Yeah. Wasn't there when I went to bed? Yeah. Mm. Guess that's. I guess. I guess that could be uh, the case. All right. We spent. Uh, Quite a bit of time talking about Red Raider basketball today. You still can weigh in on that if you uh, had a special experience last night that you want to share or you, were, or you ran into somebody. Like uh, Chuck Hines. I ran into a number of people. I've had some morning drive listeners. I've had a morning drive See? listener all last those, night. I hope all yeah. those people text into the chat line right now. I, I, this, and I, I don't know if this guy was, uh, if it was a compliment or not. As we were walking through the concourse, he, he said I was a West... Uh, West Texas phenomenon. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think West that describes Texas you well. Phenomenon. So I, I think you could probably take that a lot of a lot of different ways. Uh, I don't necessarily take that as a negative or as a no as a as a positive, but a West Texas phenomenon. Mm-hmm. That's so. fair. And you've always said you just you, love me or hate me, but you want to be known. <laughs> well, people, I, people well, I mean, know who you are. I, I think if you're going to do this, I mean, that's what you kind of got to put yourself out there a little bit right mm-hmm. you got people that love you and hate you and it's just the way it is it's just the way it is you know it's like i got big i got broad shoulders all right so you can climb on climb on board it's all but mostly they love you ah, <laughs> i think they love me when i leave Eight twenty-five this morning here on the morning drive day happy valentine's day uh to everybody uh so if you've forgotten uh this is your friendly reminder there's Still time to uh, save the day, so to speak. This has been the Morning Drive Podcast, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at double T 97.3.com.